Flight 8 was nothing short of an emotional roller coaster. SpaceX finally launched Starship Flight 8, achieving a historic milestone. The Super Heavy booster was successfully caught by the tower on the third attempt. But just when it seemed like a perfect mission, disaster struck. Once again, they lost the second hardware version. So what went wrong this time? The Starship Flight 8 is the second flight of a new version of the ship and test new enhancements to the Super Heavy booster, while flying a similar profile to that of Flight 5 on October 13th, which saw the successful first landing and capture of the Super Heavy booster. It is also expected to include a relight of the ship engines, test re-entry gear for the ship in space, and mark the first deployment of simulated Starlink satellites. It tests new upgrades to SpaceX's ship vehicle and Super Heavy booster developed in the wake of the company's Flight 6 mission. The upgrades were originally added on SpaceX's Flight 7 launch, but the ship vehicle suffered a propellant leak and internal fires, leading to its destruction before the test was completed. Flight 8 launched on Thursday, March 6. The weather looked favorable at the pad, facilitating a launch window opening at 5.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. At time T plus 40 seconds, the countdown was held for a final launch check and then confirmed that the vehicle was fully ready. After everything was finished, three seconds before liftoff, the flame deflector system, better known as the water deluge system, sprang into action, unleashing an immense 422,000 gallons of water. This torrent served to suppress the searing heat and deafening acoustic pressure produced by the Raptor engines. Ignition immediately began in a precisely timed sequence, starting with the inner engines and progressing outward. As all 33 Raptor engines roared to life, they unleashed an astonishing amount of thrust, propelling the rocket skyward with sheer, unrelenting power. The launch tower arms detached from the rocket, allowing Starship Flight 8 to ascend from the launch pad during the cheer from SpaceX's Starbase facility in Boca Chica, Texas. In a breathtaking display of energy and illumination, the vehicle ascended smoothly, leaving a dense trail of exhaust visible for miles. The engines operated as expected, producing maximum thrust for Starship. Telemetry indicated a swift increase in both altitude and speed. After passing max Q, or moment of peak aerodynamic stress on the rocket, Booster 15 shut down most of its engines as planned in preparation for stage separation which took place at T plus 2 minutes and 45 seconds. Stage separation was smooth with no signs of anomalies. The boosters began their descent to Earth, but we quickly discovered an unexpected problem with the B-15's Raptor engines when we lost two Raptors in the middle ring. Fortunately, it didn't impact on the vehicle flipping its orientation to prepare for re-entry. At around T plus 5 minutes and 10 seconds, the hot staging ring was jettisoned. T plus 5 minutes and 15 seconds, the live reporter announced. Everything looking good for the Super Heavy and for Starship today. Uh, what's it like there at Starbase as we get ready to catch? The booster descended toward the landing zone, entering the transonic phase. Around 6 minutes and 35 seconds after liftoff, the landing burn began guiding the booster toward Mechazilla's catch arms. Six minutes and 57 seconds, we successfully caught the booster with ease for the third time. As Booster 15 completed its mission and stood down, its counterpart, Ship 34, stepped into the spotlight. The vehicle continued to ascend, with a planned engine cutoff eight minutes and 44 seconds after liftoff. However, one more time, the incident happened with the loss of several engines on the ship at 8 minutes and 17 seconds after liftoff. At the same time, the vehicle also lost its control. At T plus 9 minutes 22 seconds, the signal started to go dead, and we could see that the ship's liquid oxygen tanks were depleted. Seconds later, all Raptors were lost, signaling the end of Ship 34. While the signal loss doesn't show us the ship exploding, on the computer screens in SpaceX's control room, we can see an engine blow up. Additionally, on X, there were some videos capturing Ship 34's debris re-entering just north of Miami. Shortly after the flight, 
SpaceX announced on X about the ship's explosion. During Starship's ascent burn, the vehicle experienced a rapid unscheduled disassembly, and contact was lost. Our team immediately began coordination with safety officials to implement pre-planned contingency responses. We will review the data from today's flight test to better understand root cause. As always, success comes from what we learn, and today's flight will offer additional lessons to improve Starship's reliability. A few days before the crucial launch, CEO Elon Musk posted a rare video on X showcasing a Starship upper stage executing a vertical water landing. This is a real video of a past SpaceX Starship water landing. Trying again tomorrow. We need to perfect ship re-entry at extreme temperatures before attempting to catch the ship with the tower arms, like the booster. He confirmed that SpaceX would move forward with its next Starship test flight on Monday. Musk also emphasized the necessity of perfecting the spacecraft's re-entry under extreme heat before attempting a tower arm catch. Flight 8 is nearly seven weeks after its previous attempt ended in a mid-air explosion over the Atlantic Ocean. In preparation, the company introduced several hardware and operational upgrades aimed at boosting the rocket's reliability. This mission embraces several experiments focused on enabling Starship's upper stage to return to the launch site. A significant number of tiles are removed from Starship to stress test vulnerable areas across the vehicle. Multiple metallic tile options, including one with active cooling, test alternative materials for protecting Starship during re-entry. On the sides of the vehicle, non-structural versions of Starship's catch fittings are installed to test the fitting's thermal performance, along with a section of the tile line receiving a smoothed and tapered edge to address hot spots observed during re-entry on Starship's sixth flight test. Starship's re-entry profile is designed to intentionally stress the structural limits of the upper stage's rear flaps while at the point of maximum entry dynamic pressure. Finally, several radar sensors were tested on the launch and catch tower's chopsticks with the goal of increasing the accuracy when measuring distances between the chopsticks and a returning vehicle. The Super Heavy booster for this flight features upgraded avionics, including a more powerful flight computer, improved power and network distribution, and integrated smart batteries. Distinct vehicle and pad criteria must be met prior to the return and catch of the Super Heavy booster, requiring healthy systems on the booster and tower and a final manual command from the mission's flight director. If this command is not sent prior to the completion of the boost back burn, or if automated health checks show unacceptable conditions with Super Heavy or the tower, the booster will default to a trajectory for a soft splashdown in the Gulf of America. This also happened during Flight 6, when concerns regarding the launch tower's health checks led to an abort of the attempt to catch the booster with Mechazilla, opting instead for a controlled splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. The company stated, we accept no compromises when it comes to ensuring the safety of the public and our team, and booster return will only take place if conditions are right. Additionally, SpaceX also mentioned the returning booster would slow down from supersonic speeds, resulting in audible sonic booms in the area around the landing zone. Generally, the only impact to those in the surrounding area of a sonic boom is the brief thunder-like noise with variables like weather and distance from the return site determining the magnitude experienced by observers. Developmental testing by definition is unpredictable, but by putting flight hardware in a flight environment as frequently as possible, they are able to quickly learn and execute design changes as they seek to bring Starship online as a fully and rapidly reusable vehicle. This is intended to eliminate concerns about the negative impact of the loud sonic booms generated during the rocket's landing. Citizens are concerned that the potential for loud, sudden noises that could cause minor structural damage to homes, disrupt wildlife, and create a general sense of disturbance, particularly in areas close to the launch site. SpaceX wrote on its website, the FAA, in consultation with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, evaluated sonic booms from the landing of the Super Heavy and found no significant impacts to the environment. 
Although animals exposed to the sonic booms may be briefly startled, numerous prior studies have shown sonic booms of varying intensity have no detrimental effect on wildlife. Finally, the area around Starbase is well known as being host to various protected birds. SpaceX already has extensive mitigations in place and has been conducting biological monitoring for birds near Starbase for nearly 10 years. The protocol for the monitoring was developed with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and is conducted by professional, qualified, independent biologists. To date, the monitoring has not shown any population-level impacts to monitored bird populations, despite unsubstantiated claims to the testimony that the authors themselves later edited. Even though Starship's fifth flight will take place outside of nesting season, SpaceX is still implementing additional mitigations and monitoring to minimize impacts to wildlife, including infrared drone surveillance pre- and post-launch to track nesting presence. We are also working with USFWS experts to assess deploying special protection measures prior to launches during bird nesting season.